we go. So, all right, 59, God, tiny, tiny lettering, can't see it anymore, it's like, I need to have the giant sized ones on my phone so I can actually see it. I want to take this sticker off here, but this is kind of just a test board because I already made the one and it's like I'm not going and buying another new one. <laughs> so um, this is just one of my boards that I also use as a blocking board for watercolor paper. So, um, yeah, but it'll do. And actually, doesn't hurt to have an extra one around during holiday time. <laughs> so, we have our stapler. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. We don't need tape. That's, that we can move. So for this part, all we need is for making a board. Well, I better move my doll needle before I lose it. I will be very upset. You need, for my particular stapler, it is, I use the JT21s and I use the quarter inch. The later ones that I just loaded, I only had five sixteenths left. So... Um, I, I'm not sure if I, I'm, I did put the blocking board supply list on there, I believe. So you should be able, you should be able to find that. And hopefully this won't be too noisy for you tonight because the last time I recorded this, I was actually using Zoom and this time I'm using my computer. So I don't think it has the filters on it that the zoom filters have. So usually so we have the two foot by four foot three and a quarter inch board and at first when you tack things in it's going to be really hard. Um, but over time when you because like on my big board that's underneath this this board it's two foot by four foot, and now along the edge, they just go right in. You could practically push them in with your hand and not really use a hammer, but that leads to severe arthritis. I don't recommend it because I have it, and blocking is one of the reasons why. So, um, this time, so my other board that I did for class, which was here two seconds ago. Basically, all I did is just wrap it around and I didn't worry about the edges or anything. Now, I've been using this under um, my cutting mat to do classes because it was just smaller and I didn't have to turn away to use my sideboard, which is what I usually do. I kind of have like a little cockpit here to work in. Um, one, it's like a U shape and it has. Hello? Hello? Sugar. All right, I guess you're my person to cook when I see your number. Bye. All right, bye. All right. So you lost me. Wonderful. What's that say? No, I don't want to play music. And leave meeting. Ugh. Recording in progress. Oh yeah, this ought to be fun, guys. Because I can't read. And now you're back. Yeah, for now. Okay. 
Let's keep going. So, um, so the last. Whoa, 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 hold up! We missed everything. You had just put yeah. the board on there. Oh, and... for pity's sake! Okay, so this is my, <laughs> this is my previous board that I made, uh, in the first class. And as you can see, I didn't roll the edges or anything. And I've been using this uh, for class uh, to be able to just steam things on using the other side. Because I have like a little cockpit sewing area, you know, where my classes are. You've seen the cutting mat and stuff. And then this is my blocking side. And so I've had it under there. And I'm really not loving that I did this. Because every time I move it, it's been rolling under. Uh, so today, I'm going to finesse it a little bit more, which is going to be, you know, I probably should just do it right on the one that I use all the time, but I'm going to do it on the new board. So these all have um, a seam in them along the edge. So since I have two of those, I'm going to kind of line it up. I think it might be better until we do blocking to do it like this. That might be better. So I'm going to line those so that when we to go to do this side, it's going to be right on that edge. And the first edge, I'm going to just... Along. Of course, now I gotta move my camera again. I'm sorry. Is that just cotton? So this is a this is a tarp for painting that is cloth because the cloth tarps you can get like a five by seven or something like that at um, through Home Depot. And it's a nice heavy canvas. When you start buying stuff by the yard at the Joann's or wherever, it gets expensive. So this was like 10 bucks maybe. And um, you can use an old sheet, just double it up, okay? Because eventually it will kind of start to get thread, thread worn from all the tacks going through it. So I am going to go nuts because this is not how I usually have to do this so my cameras are all kind of discombobulated. Okay, so I'm going to start. on the corner where I'm going to have two of them hopefully meet. <laughs> hopefully. Come on. And I'm just going to take that seam. I'm going to start at this end. Now if you're if you're going to say, "Well, Kelly, my hands they can't they can't do this." They have little electric ones. I do have one of those. I just opted to not bring it out because sometimes it gets a little heavy for me. But um, you can uh, you can get one of those. It's like twenty bucks. It's not very expensive, and that allows you to be able to do it yourself. Okay, so we got that tack down, and I'm just gonna go along this edge. And I'm keeping this right now. I'm just going about every one and a half inches, but I'm keeping this uh, seam turned over edge very close. And I will come back in and fill in. Because when I get to the other side, it's just like if you ever have done like any little upholstery jobs, we go to the opposite side next, and then we hit the other sides as well. I find that
Warning in progress. Hello. I know, you guys just chat without me, it's okay. So, um, I'm going, I don't know, every quarter inch, if we can see that, with the way the friggin' tacks are so shiny, or the staple. So if you've ever done any upholstering, you know, you do one side, and then you hit the other side pull against it on the other side. If you put your tacks too far apart, that's when you're going to get in trouble and you're going to see rippling. Just like blocking, essentially. Alright, so then we flip it. We're going to kind of use... And now we got I'm frozen. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. All right, well, just keep talking to me so if I start to freeze up again, I can touch the screen and try to get it to wake up, maybe. So, all right. Now, I am trimming off a little excess that I did not trim off before I got on here with you. Okay. Everything is square. Ugh, that's way too much. So I'm going to try to keep this on the sides. I'm just folding over. I am. Okay. To make it be like a neat edge. Exactly. Exactly. Because I didn't do that on the other one, and now it's being ridiculous. And. So I'm going to do the center, I'm going to put a staple in there to hold it. And then I'm going to come and fold and fold, make sure I've got, you know, enough. And then I'm pulling this tight on the opposite side as well. Just like with blocking, you need to get everything nice and tight. I do have a tool for that for blocking, but it's just ugh, what's stuck to me. It's that sticker I was trying to scrape off earlier. <laughs> okay. Um, so when I started doing this, I used to put a towel underneath it to thinking it would absorb the, you know, some of the moisture. Um, as the whole thing started to kind of um, break down from a lot of use, I found it was kind of just, it was too soft and I wasn't getting the canvas tight enough, so I didn't do that again. Um, so when I do these corners, these are the sides that are going to get the fold. Okay, I'm not worrying about that right now on these. But I use the, um, oh really? I have a jam. it'll go. I just gotta, yep, there we go. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I, 
Am I still here? Yeah. Okay. Something on the other, I have two screens and something on the other one started having a rotating picture. I was like, wait a minute. Freaking me out, guys. So it's, it's a canvas stretcher pliers that I have um, for very misshapen pieces that start getting too difficult uh, for my hands to grasp. And they're nice. Um, but I just, the way we're folding this fabric over, it wouldn't really do us much good. Because you kind of got to have something, and you'll see, because I'm going to use it. I got a couple of real Lulus to show you tonight. going to start on the side that has the rolled seam already. And we always start in the middle. Of course, that one decided to be not great. And for those tacks, uh, staples that didn't go in all the way have a hammer close by. Okay. They're just the Arrow brand and they're one and a quarter. Um, right now the ones that I'm putting in are the 5 sixteenths. And it's just a traditional uh upholstery staple, staple gun. Alright, so at this point, I do kind of like a little gift package corner and just, I'll show you in a second. I just did like a little doggy here. Okay, just folded it under. It doesn't have to have a lot of finesse. It just has to be able to hold them. all the canvases you need to hold to block. That's why I like the sheet of, of a 2x4 because you just have so much more room that you don't have to, you know, you can have one end where you can leave a bunch of stuff on it if you need to, because sometimes stuff that is, that you just couldn't possibly do, I'm going to have to probably put a nail in that because that corner was a little too short on that end. Um, but when you're doing these, when you're blocking, there are some pieces that you don't want to do, uh, you don't want to take off until right before you're able to make them because they'll shift back and then you've got to re-block it all over again and if it's giving you that much trouble then you definitely don't want to have to redo it even if it just shifted a tiny bit when you have to fight it so hard and you're going to see one tonight because somebody I don't know what it is about silk and ivory but silk and ivory uh, yep it's on 13 mesh too uh, it just does not like to block and stay I, I don't know if it's, you know, the silk aspect of it or the size of the mesh that it just doesn't want to stay put. I don't always know, but you can just tell when you're doing it that 
I sh sometimes it takes taking a couple tacks off and watching it kind of shrink in and you go, oh no, you know it's going to be an issue. So then you put those tacks back in and you're going to give it another light spray of your sizing and then you're going to let it sit some more and give it a steam over the top without touching it. So you're just using the, the force of the steam to get down in there. And I totally just broke my rule about starting in the middle, didn't I? I did. Another thing is, would you ever need to stabilize it on the back if it really wasn't so small? No, because I don't think stabilizer is is enough. Okay. The like the iron on the shape flex that we use. Yeah. It it's it'll pull it. Okay. It just will. I don't. I know some people that I know that have done it and they kind of swear by it that, oh yeah, it stays. Well, over time and people sitting against it, I don't know. I, I wouldn't guarantee that that is 100%. Um, but, okay, so when I first started... Uh, one of the things which was in 2003, I think, 2004, I forget because my kids were so tiny when I started needle po painting needlepoint, I kind of forget when I started, went from that to the other, but, um, so... What they would do, the majority of what people stitched, they used wool. It wasn't all of these fancy threads. I mean, it was starting. You know, it was starting. Uh, hold on, i got to get more tacks. So, I don't want to make out that nobody did fancy stitches. Because that's, that's not it. But... Wool was still very popular, and what they used to do to wool pillows is they would literally paint what's called rabbit glue on the back side of the needlepoint, and it was like it would make it a board. So they would block it face down, then they'd put this rabbit glue on the back so that it wouldn't shift, and they were so hard and I actually ran into um, somebody's dog chewed up an ancient coaster and I had to redo it and <laughs> it was funny because I was like there's only so much I can do with this because this is a rabbit glue piece and it's not gonna budge so, um, I mean, I, I came up with something that worked, but there's no getting that rabbit glue off. So you went from that to having these pieces that are now open and it went on, you know, nobody uses, well, I shouldn't say that. Some people might still use rabbit glue, um, but I know some people switched to using wallpaper paste because basically it's cornstarch um, and ta -da! there's your board and this time with the little no raw edge now like I said this corner I'm gonna have to use a tack on and I'll probably tack this oh that's why this double seam at the corner where they rolled it over is so thick. Let's break that up a little bit. See if we can't get it to work. 
so um, the other thing that they used to do in blocking is they used to wet block, which was basically soaking it, then restretching it. Um, ultimately, when you do that, you number one, you risk running the uh, over dye, but also you're taking away all of the sizing that's in the canvas. So that's how you cover your board. Ignore my watercolor paper. Um, and eventually you'll start, because when I do mine on my board, I start on the left side and I just go straight across with multiples. Earlier I had about eight, eight canvases on this board. So you start to break down I like to use my corners on the board to help me have at least one straight edge to start with. And I say that because when you start blocking big pieces and you start pulling and stretching, the sides don't always look square as you're going down. You have to pull on them and so you can't always have the top and the side be perfectly matching your board anymore. So let me I did my cameras a little differently this time and I'm hoping that they don't shake a whole lot while I'm hammering um, and we'll start on this corner and if I got to flip the board so do you have any more questions about actually putting the stuff on the board before we head into actually blocking we're all good okay so the next thing is I am not happy with the new um, tax. I have. I, I tried to find some at Blick today. And yeah. They only had aluminum ones. They were out of the Jacker brand. That is and the that is them. Oh. Yep. They weren't Jacker, but they they said aluminum and they didn't say stainless steel. Yeah, they 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 are. These are the ones that I got not long from. Not long ago from them. Ooh. Okay. I'll so you can. Oh, then yeah, don't get those. So okay. if you Google these, you might be able to find, you know, okay. um, stainless steel push pins. Don't buy them from Delphi Glass. They're like twice the price. Oh, don't buy them. Yeah, Delphi Glass. Um, actually, I got I got some that were exactly like this from Dick Blick. There's there's other places you can get them, but the ones that do the aluminum. Um, so the ones from Delphi that I thought I was getting were what are called more tacks, and see the see the little ridges, the the circles on that. So on Delphi Glass, they said it was this kind of tack, but then they sent me these, and they're not the same. And for whatever reason, they don't make these anymore, but these are so much better than the other kind of tacks. Um, the aluminum ones that are in the little cardboard box, and... Because I've no, no, you don't even get them close to your threads, so you don't have to worry about that. The one thing you do have to to do. So see these? See how tiny the head is? And okay, so when you see these with that tiny little head and 
they're just going to pull right out. This post is just going to pull right out of that head. And this is my problem with the new aluminum tacks, is that they're, they are not good quality. And so I had an issue with some of the jacquard ones that I got because they not only pulled out a lot, but some of them, the chips bent over. I was like, really? That's, that's not making me happy. Because when you see how I have to crank on the tack sometimes, um, I'm putting the tip in and I'm using the steel, supposed to be steel, pin part um, to use it as leverage to pull all of the fibers along. So it really, you need something that is nice and strong and isn't going to bend. And these long, stupid things, they bend so easily. So not happy. And I keep searching to find if I can find, searching to find a glut that somebody's maybe put on eBay um, that are the M-O-O-R-E brand. Because I would buy up every single box that those people offered. In fact, I thought of, I need to get a hold of the company. I mean, if that, if I, I don't, when you don't have the right tools, it makes life difficult. And I prefer the length, the quarter inch uh, for certain things. And then I prefer, I think that's 5 sixteenths on the ones, see the difference? So I use long ones for when I have to pull the fibers, uh, the waste canvas. And then I use the short ones along the top because I want that whole rim of the actual push pin part handle to be on down on the canvas and holding it where it's supposed to be. So, all right, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to try to sit while I do this. I don't know how well it's going to, if it's going to happen. I don't know if I should start off with the monster. Oh, why not? Let's get into it. So this is my monster. And it's supposed to be a uh, boxed pillow. Um, and it is extremely misshapen. And it's solely because if you look at the stitches that she used, let's see if I can get close. How do you see it? They all pull directionally. But then she used met metallics for the majority of each stitched piece. And those are very unforgiving. Metallics are extremely unforgiving, and they do not like to go back when you want them to go back. So when you're trying to block them. So I'm going to go up like this. And when... Do you find that if you want to use those metallic fibers, and you're, you, know, you have your stitch and something like that, is it better to stitch that on? Yeah, but when you start getting into these sizes and it becomes difficult to use a frame, most people are just like, oh, my finisher will figure it out. They That's what they think, that you're going to be able to just make it happen. And we try to very hard, but it isn't always possible. So I'm trying to here. Okay. So, when I start, uh, this person makes me crazy. If it doesn't come from her shop, she cuts 
the tape off the edge and just does this random chopping and takes away important canvas. So I'm going to start on the left, my left, and then I am pulling this tight and I'm trying to make sure that this row of waste canvas looks semi straight. And I try to get approximately in the same area. And I want you to see. You see how much that's pulled? That's from putting it in this way and pulling the canvas that way so that tightens the entire area across the top. So now you can kind of manipulate it and look at it and say, okay, that's pretty straight. To turn on my, I have the auto shut off on my iron, and it is probably going to shut off again before I get started on it. And I'm just going to start taking my short pieces and putting short uh, tacks. If you have to do your long tacks, you have to do your long tacks. If that's all you have. But I try to use the shorties across the top so I don't have to pound the long ones in so deep that I risk um, when I pull them out that I risk taking this, the stainless steel part out. So one of the things you have to be careful of with these is that the aluminum does leave a little gray dust on your fingers. So keep a little wet paper towel off to the side and occasionally uh, just clean your fingers off from that so that you don't accidentally touch anything. Like, it usually isn't like the stitched part, it's usually something on your face and then your children start laughing at you because you got this big dark gray smudge on your face. I was like, yeah, thanks guys. Love you too. But, you know, that's just my kids. Yours might not do that to you. You can tell that I don't use this corner of the board that much because <laughs> it's a little harder to get the tacks in. Oh, the other thing is, you'll get that gray buildup on the end of your hammer, so just put a paper towel down and swirl it around and get the gray off of there as well. Sorry, Kelly, I missed something, but if, if the tape is left on the canvas, what was it? Yep. So it depends on how close it is to the needlepoint stitching. If they've given you, you know, a good inch and a half, you can sometimes put your um, tacks further out and you won't be affected by it. But sometimes, sometimes what happens is that, um, the, the kind that's like uh, mm. bias tape. Sometimes you want to take it off, and I just take a um, X-Acto blade and run it parallel to the stitches underneath it to just tick it a little bit so that it'll peel off. And I just take it all off so that I have as much canvas to use because it will inhibit you 
getting that stretch, that first stretch, if it's in, especially if it's in too close to the stitched area. Um, and sometimes the, definitely the tape if it's too close because it's not going to help you to put a perimeter of sewn edge so that you can save, you know, people think that if they turn the edge over and just sew around it, then that edge won't shred. Well, now you're inhibiting pulling it lengthwise down. Um, so I, if the tape is too close or, or if it just, if it's really shifty like this one is, I, I don't know if I would have cut it off, but I don't like it when somebody else cuts it off for me <laughs> because, because she comes way in and I could have had more waist canvas. And the more waist canvas you have, the easier it is to block. Okay, so you don't want to, you only want the tape for the inches it gives you as opposed to using it to help you block to the finger. Correct. I, I, it, it does not help you block at all to put your tacks down into, because you're not, then you're just putting, you're not stabilizing the canvas, you're stabilizing that, that bias tape that's along okay. the edge. Yeah. And... Then, of course, we need to talk about the dreaded, um, oh, what's it called? Why do I hate it that much that I try to wipe it from my brain? It's the interlocking canvas. is awful. And trying to, this is where you have to make sure to tack it in and get this bottom piece flat down because it loves to rip and it also does not like to uh, stay blocked it, it's very difficult so because this piece is supposed to be a pillow I'm very concerned about it um, and if I can't get this to block right uh, she may have to shift gears and maybe make it into something else other than a pillow. Um, with the backgammon board that I also have to work on, um, it's, it's different because there's going to be a piece of foam core or depending on who actually does that part of it because it's going to go into a tray for you know the new the new ones they have it's inserted into the acrylic trays and um so even if i can't even if it wants to shift back a little bit it's okay because that board that's going on the inside you're going to be able to make it square again and it'll stay square whereas with a pillow that's where your challenge lies. You definitely want to make sure that you stuff it a little harder than you normally would to keep it from really shifting back to where it was. Um, one of the things you need to remember is wool has a memory. And silk and ivory has wool in it. Wool will try to pull back to... Um, somebody used a term, um, it was like, it was, uh, akin to emotional stitching she, is what she called it, where she's stitching and she's, yeah, I'm just going to take my frustration out while I'm stitching and try to relax. And she said, and then I pull it so tight, even on a frame <laughs> that, you know, it just, it does, it does still affect it. If you use a frame, and even if it doesn't look like it needs to be blocked, you need to block it. Because every time you're going in and out with that needle, and every time you're touching your skin to that canvas, it's breaking it, that sizing down a little bit. So don't, if people say, oh no, you don't have to, yes you do. 
you'll be shocked to see it shift back just that little bit and then you'll be able to give it a quick all you have to do is give it a quick steam you don't even have to really use any of the sizing on it because you used a frame but now it's going to be realigned and reset and you just got to trust me and just do it once and you'll see the difference. Would you, you do that even for small like little ornaments? Oh yeah. Okay. Everything. I do it for everything. Um, because it does, when you get it on there and you do your first pull, you'll be really surprised at how it just gives it this little shift. I'm sitting here looking at this trying to decide how I need to approach this. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that is because this one might have to be done in stages where I try to get it to shift as much as possible. We steam it, we put it out, and then tomorrow I come back, take it off, and turn it like the other way and put the initial tacks down the opposite side and pull it again. So sometimes there are pieces if you are doing this for somebody else and they have sent you a piece like this, it could take you an hour to block something. You're pulling it and you're trying to coerce it and I've told my family, oh I only got three pieces to block, I'll be home in an hour. And they laugh and they go, yeah, we'll see you in three. Because they know <laughs> that I start doing it. It's like, yeah, no. So that is a seat. That iron is on the linen setting. And I have an iron that allows uh, me to turn the steam on and off for uh, my, specifically for my, uh, yeah, interfacing. Uh, because Can you use a floating steamer versus an iron? You know, um, people have asked me that, and you could, but I think an iron has a more forceful steam. Okay. But I don't know that because I don't have a steamer. If you have one that can kind of down in mm -hmm. and give that kind of bursting steam okay. then I would say give it a shot if you already have one it can't hurt to to try it um, some people have an iron that um, somebody asked me they're like does your iron spit uh, my old one did because it was an inexpensive one and it didn't tell me like mine tells me when it's ready now now, I am actually literally ironing the waste canvas right now to get some really good steam in there. I am not on my the stitching. And we're going to pull it down. Ooh. Yeah, this is going to be a stages one, I can just tell. So what I'm doing is I am looking down this side. Hold on. So I am looking down this. Okay. I'm trying to kind of go down. And make this row straight-ish. And I say ish because you can't tell with the way the rest of this thing is so warped. Down a little bit more so you can see. Maybe. Okay. Um, so I mean it's very warped. And I think actually I just have to start going straight across the bottom. When, sometimes when it's really bad, I might even take 
uh, our sizing and give it a little shot so that it stays damp for lack of a better word because I don't want it wet but I want the steam to kind of it also helps like start to get it down into these fibers again It's the only kind I use. Um, I am not able to find it in my grocery store anymore. I don't know why. I had to buy a case of it off Amazon. And I had to pay quite a bit in shipping because it was considered um, a toxic chemical so you have to have like special insurance on it I, I didn't care because I use it all the time and it does not well depending on how many ugly things I <laughs> ugly blocking pieces not ugly stitched pieces um, that I get you can use it up quite quickly so I just said, you know what, I'll pay for it. And I tried to get it through Walmart was offering it, but it, then it ended up being one of those second, um, what do they call that? It's, it's from a third party delivery person. They started kind of trying to be like Amazon, I guess. And she, then their shipping was outrageous, so I just said, yeah, no. All right, so I just keep steaming and pulling and steaming and pulling and trying to get this to go straight. And it's, it's this corner that's going to give me the serious grief. It does not want... To pull. Right now, yep, I'm not even attempting to do measurements. But also, after doing it for so long, you, you kind of get an eye for it. And I can usually come pretty close. Uh, this, but the tool that I use for it, ugh. That's the thing. I kind of remember that when I pull the head off of the pin, don't put the head back into your tack box. Um, I use, where is it? It's a quilting ruler. I have a long one, a big one, and a short one. I use the short one the most. It's kind of hard on this one because of there's no other perpendicular lines to go by. Uh, and just because this is straight doesn't mean that, the, <laughs> that these... So you have to kind of learn to use things within it to make sure that you're on the right track. But see this area right there, it just, and these little dancing girls, mate, those are maids of milking. Anyway, they're going to be part of the issue of trying to get this straight because they have very large metallic dresses. So going horizontally, it's going to be a challenge. Not every, obviously, not every piece is going to be this difficult. But I'm showing you this piece because if you need to tackle something like this, you don't have to be afraid of it. Just start pounding 
contacts in and start pulling and straightening and so the, the people that want you to use um, ceiling tiles, a ceiling tile would not work for something like this because you can't, it, it's too mushy, the pins, you wouldn't be able to pull with it to really put some welly into it and get it to move and so when you're doing this, if you see, I just pulled this and do you see the little dip? How that, there's like a pull mark here. And it's not very bad, but that's why you can't have your tacks too far apart. And then you have to start kind of coming in and putting them in, in between even, bring it, you know, a little bit forward and put a secondary row in if you have to. Once you get that pulled, it, and you need to do it again because you think, okay, that really needs to come forward. Don't, don't lift the tacks you have. That's why it's nice to have really big waste canvas area because then you can come in in front of this row of tacks and pull some more and then take the ones that are in the row behind and use them in another place. Just take those tacks out once you have it re-tacked. Because when you're trying to when you're trying to get something lined up and you don't want and you're fighting with it, you don't want to take that out and have it go way back in, which some of them will, depending on what they are stitched with. But this is actually slowly along the bottom getting there. If you come in too close, I'll, I'll show you on this area here. So if you came in really close and you did a big hard pull like this and then you came in really close again and you did another big pull, you're just going to keep getting your waves. So I always like to go a little further out and just slowly put them in. Like I said, I can see that this, there's too big of a space here. So we're just going to put another one in and pull that out. And I, eventually, it will start getting there. And slowly, slowly, we will get this into the right shape. But now I know that we did a board first, but this has probably got a whole another 30 minutes of blocking just because you're trying to, now I'm going to pull this side out because it is the most misshapen and this the left side doesn't look as bad it looks correct on this side okay so with that being said let me finish I finish the bottom before I get ahead of myself and so that you can see, let's see if I can get an angle on this. Okay. I'm putting it in like that and pulling. And I, yes, I just broke the waste canvas. I don't care. It's far enough back, it's not going to hurt it. Okay. And now I'm pulling it backwards. 
and it's sitting at an angle, believe it or not. I don't know if I can... Uh, not a really great view. Well, that kind of gives it... It's just, it's back further. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put it in like this. Pull it nice and tight. And as I'm pounding it, I'm pulling it again. I can, uh, kind of while I'm yep. I can only find them on blitz. That's the only place you know they have to blend to make sure that that happens. Okay. So they do seem really difficult to find. Great. Another thing that we can't find. Um, okay. I'll... The, the Delphi ones, they were ridiculous. They had it. But they were, like I said, 20 bucks more. Maybe I should just call and call more and see if I can be a, become a distributor for the good ones if they still make them. Viking what? Oh, okay. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> the push pins are what? What are the words you use? Oh, yeah. I did a stainless steel push pin. I put in more. Sorry. Oh, okay. I put in more stainless steel push pins and Viking woodcraft in there. And it, it does it show a box that says more? No, it doesn't show. I mean, they look old, but it, the stuff is going to be. Oh, I'm going on there. Send me that link. Because I will get some coming my way. Well, maybe I'll call them and make them. Because, see, that's how one of the Amazon people tricked me. Actually, yeah, is they put more pins but then what I got was those crappy aluminum ones that I already had not a happy camper oh man sign me up send me that link man I am Okay, but I would still, if it's eBay, sometimes those are like old hardware companies or people trying to get rid of those things. And, okay. Oh, I see why it came up. Point for head. Right. But that's but that's exactly what these are. Okay. Yep, they are. So um I have got to get on and can you uh message me that if we are friends on Facebook because if this shuts off I won't be able to get that link you just put up for me. It'll wipe it out. When I what? I'm sorry. Can I send you an email or something? Sure. What about like steel furniture packs? Uh, as long as they have a big enough head to hold onto. To be able to pull them back out again. 
it just is really important that we find some that man I'm just I'm telling you some of these that I still have that have survived are some of the original ones from like when my kids were little and you can tell because I've hammered the heck out of it and now the head of it is so big Well, if you're doing a big piece, yeah, it does. So, you probably do need 100 or so. Oh, no. I get 300 minimum. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you're going to be blocking a lot, you know, if you're doing a, if you have a glut, if you're doing this for like a business type thing, I have. I'm doing it for myself to try to learn how to. Okay. Then, then get two. Then get two boxes, because I doubt you're going to have ten pieces on a board. Um, but if you're doing a pillow like this pillow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, forty-thirteen, forty-fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, for
All right, I'm spraying a little bit of the sizing on this because this side doesn't want to pull at all. So go ahead, keep talking. Okay. Um, the end of the Right. But see, I still like I I still like these. I just I I don't know. I the biggest challenge we have is finding tax now because of the vendors going out of business. So if you oh shoot. Are you guys still there? Nope. You guys disappeared and I went, well, I'm guessing that I'm so not there anymore. Um, I don't know if you can see it squarely, but it's getting there. I don't think it was a perfect triangle in the first part. Um, but then again, we never know when we're doing this if somebody overstitched. But, yeah, shoot, that moved. But it's pretty, pretty good. Pretty happy with it. So, um, I guess one way to kind of see if we're so visually. We're pretty straight. I can tell that. So there is some weird overstitching that is on this ring. And I don't think it's going to uh, actually lock out. Come way in now. I can feel knots behind it. I can feel that it's really thick and kind of has something weird going on underneath. So potentially, and unless I flip it over and really, you know, lay eyes on it, you know, a canvas could have gotten damaged and they tried to meld two pieces of canvas together. It could just be that the way she did the gold, then she did this, but I don't know. Can you see how mushy that stitching looks right here? How it looks like, it does not look clear like this. It's kind of odd. So something's going on under there. So I'm going to not make myself too nuts and just because so that's the other thing you have to watch for um if your piece has 
things within it that don't look like they've been blocked. And it can be very difficult because it's a line and it's, you know, kind of wavy or doing something odd. Like here's kind of another weird spot in this area. So you have to just, this is where, see the gray? I don't know if you can see that or not. Ugh. So sometimes if you have an area that isn't, you can put your dowel needle in and try to move it. But I can tell just by what I did there, she's got something going on on the back side because all those stitches moved and none of the rest of them did. So you can kind of try to pull things with the doll needle, but it's not going to happen for that area. So we're just going to leave it and not make it worse <laughs> than uh, the mystery that's going on beneath the canvas. All right. So let me put in a couple more and then we will move on to another piece. I, so because it's so crazy, I am going to give this a steam. I'll give it a quick spray. I'll give it a, with the sizing. I'll give it a steam. Very close. And I'll just let it sit while I'm moving on to the next piece. And then I will probably come back and do it again tomorrow. Same thing in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I'll do it again and really make sure that all of because am I back? Probably not. In progress. Hello. Hello. So what I was saying is, is that I will steam this, spray it, steam it. Come in tomorrow morning, spray it, steam it. Before I leave in the afternoon, whenever, spray it, steam it. And I'll probably leave this on until I get ready to actually make it into the pillow if I think it's going to stay because I don't it's so humid here that just the even though we have air conditioning in the barn it could still just start to shift out so um it's can't tell if this is silk and ivory it's a good possibility that it is because the shop really kind of only sells to pearl and silk and ivory and crying out. Ow, that was my finger. Which fibers are the most cooperative? It has more um mm. pearl. Oh god, okay. Um, it has more to do, I think, sometimes with the, all of these stitches going in a diagonal to the left, pulled this canvas this way, okay? Mm -hmm. And so then when we're trying to block it, and because it wasn't on a frame, this is where the challenge lies. If we can get enough of the, um, sizing back into just just back into it a little bit you don't want to soak it though 
because again, even soaking it with sizing, you run the risk of the over dyes bleeding. You run yeah. the risk of just doing damage of so many sorts. That's why I do a light spray. I give it a light steam. It quickly dissipates. And by morning, it's really, really dry. And we'll do it again. I did a rug. Can you do a piece that's all in basket weave? Does that have a tendency to have a strong diagonal hole? So I, the candy tray that I just did had a very strong diagonal pull. Um, the candy canvas, and because the basket weave is so well woven, it really did not want to block. It was a very hard block for me. And because there were some metallics mixed in, that one took me just as long as this to block if not a little bit longer. And then I took it off to make the tray and it shifted a little. So thank goodness it was in, it had foam core in it because otherwise it wasn't going to stay square. So, um, you know, this is where you just kind of never know. But I will say this, I know for a fact This basket weave, okay, here's our next piece. It's on 13 camp, count canvas. It's basket weave. This will not stay square. When you take it off the board, I don't know why, I don't know what properties of this uh, make it not want to stay blocked. Um, but it's, it's going to shift because I've done the uh, most recent picture frame. That was off, a little bit of humidity, it shifted. And so that's why more than likely I will send this back with the board inside of it for her so she doesn't have to go through it again. She specifically sent me this can, two um, backgammon boards to block for this class um, because the challenge of trying to... Recording in progress. So, um, Joan specifically sent me this because, ooh, because this center bar can be very difficult to get straight depending on how they stitched it because it's got so much on each end. But what's funny is I look at this and I know that it is, um, I know that it is, uh, yeah, I just said it, silk and ivory. And it's actually going to block pretty easily. So, I have another one. That was my iron. And it was hot. Let me see. So this one is also silk and ivory, and it has some metallics in it. Let's see if this one's, oh dear. Yeah, okay. So this is why she sent me this. <laughs> I don't know that I have enough tax to actually, <laughs> to actually do this one. Uh, with having used, well, we'll give it a shot. If I have to use some of my junky tacks, we'll, we'll do it. Um, so, 
she's had a few of these backgammon boards that she literally could not get the center to square up uh, just because of how it's stitched etc and so we start the same way every time put this back Start. Yep. Okay. So, Kelly, as a professional finisher, do you, if you get a piece that really needs a lot of blocking attention, do you charge them extra for that? No. Really? <laughs> you should. That's not how they look at it. You get paid by the piece, and it includes blocking. So this is where I would, I definitely have to use the quilting square. Um, even though I would, again, send this back with a piece in it uh, for her. So it's basically halfway done for her. Um, just to make sure it's going to stay square. But just to make sure it actually is square, you start by lining it up and you, What's really great about these rulers is that you can see through them and you can watch how everything shifts. And I really love that you that you said that that yes, I should charge more, but um, it, it just what happens is when you're doing pay by the piece, uh, finishing there's a reason why certain people are are just taking ornaments round ornaments not even shaped ornaments all I do is ornaments well yeah because 90% of the time they're ridiculously easy and it's all gravy and you can crank them out in you know an hour hour and a half depending on how you put your cording on, and I know how a lot of people put their cording on, and it isn't sewn. And I'm not a glue hater, but as a professional, that should be on your page, that that's how you do it, because you can't do one in an hour unless you're doing that. Just saying. So, it's, you have, you have gravy pieces, and then you have pieces it takes you a little time and sometimes where you make it up in this piece am I frozen still frozen yes frozen over here please. all right I'm going I'm going I'm going if it'll let me out why does it do that Oh, there we go. Boy, it did not want to let me back on. It was thinking and thinking. So, um, the, the real banner part of these backgammon boards, is they're like a giant square ornament. So, if the blocking takes me a little longer, it's okay. Because I can do a speedy quick board, put it on, speedy, sort of speedy quick when it's the really long cording, it takes a little while longer, and we're just doing our line straight across the top, okay, we put the two tacks out, did the pull at the other end, and now we're just putting down our, I guess we'll call it a pull row to pull against. On my end, Kelly, I'm frozen. Okay. 
Am I frozen still? No, no. Okay. All right. Sometimes if I just go in and say I'm going to leave, it'll, it gives me just enough time to kick back on. Not always. So our, we're, we're putting a pull line in to pull against. Okay, I did a really stupid thing and put a spent blade in my tack box. That was not smart. I, I think that this is actually going to be easier than she thinks it was going to be. Kind of like that lobster picture frame. I thought it was going to be tough, and then it just, boop. It's like, really? Okay. What was the point of that for advanced blocking class? Now, on that point, I will say that sometimes brick covers, you the notch that's there, if the if it doesn't want to really go straight, like pulling it at the edge doesn't straighten those out, you can literally come in and pull with a tack like I did near the gold rings on the last one and kind of force that little square area to straighten up better than it wants to. Uh, also, sometimes when you have the... Why do I always forget what it's called? Yeah. Anyway, cut this off, the edge. If it's um, going to inhibit you from getting a good pull, which this one is fine, uh, sometimes if somebody has stitched right over to the edge of the binding, whatever. I am like running on fumes and I cannot pull my words up fast enough. But if you have to cut this off because sometimes if you really can't get this to pull because this does not want to pull because it doesn't. It doesn't stretch very much like the rest of your um, like the rest of your canvas does. So you might find that you need to get rid of that and you know try to keep it on if you can because then it makes it just that much shorter but I definitely don't ever tack into this edge. Salvage. Salvage. Thank you. Oh my giddy on. I'm telling you. I am running on serious fumes. I worked all day at the flower shop yesterday and today and then trying to come in here and it's just like ah is it bedtime yet i think it is was it a wedding it was a funeral for a friend so i am more than happy to do it and made some very lovely pieces so that made me happy that was kind of my contribution but um It just, I'm not used to doing it. I sit on my butt all day and block and paint and, <laughs> and my body's going, Oh, you, it's been a long time since you've been doing this, this often and this long. Which is just a nice wake up call to say, come on, Kelly. Oh, so... I wanted to do this when I was over here. If you look, all the little ladies are... Ugh. Still gone? Okay. I'm leaving. I'm leaving.
Recording in progress. Okay, so I turned my camera so that I could show you that all our little people's feet are straight. I meant to show you that before I turned it. So everybody looks pretty good. Nobody's wobbly. And you can tell when things don't look right stitch wise. After a while you'll start to really be able to see whether or not it's right. Probably going to have to pull that oh, this a little bit more. Because okay. it's definitely pulling at an angle. Seriously. This is the typical thing that happens on big pieces that are not on a frame is that the left to right has to be pulled back and that this side just does not want to go straight. So you have to be careful that you don't over pull one of your corners. I think it's the, this side, the right where I'm facing. Or else it will, um, you won't be able to get one of the corners as long as the other one and it becomes a whole little mess. So, <clears throat> what we are going to do, I think, on this one, is I'm going to kind of try to make this center first. I'm going to pull my left side. Mm, can't even really, can't see that because the arm is blocking it. But I'm pulling the left side and putting a tack into it just to hold it for a second. Okay. And I'm looking I'm going to use the top as my straight for the square. Okay. I got something on my arm that's bugging me. So let's make this center bar straight first. And I've over pulled this side. I need to. Let it go. Again, we just don't, sometimes you don't know how to tackle something. And you have to go against the ways you would typically do it. Recording in progress. So what I was saying is, is that sometimes you have to approach it in a different way. And because I want to make sure that this part is perfectly square, I need, I'm going to start with that. And where am I? Just to clarify, you're starting with that middle yep. um, 
design to make sure that is straight because it's so big that will help you avoid that problem you were talking about where one corner might not be able to be pulled. Correct. So, and I know that I can pull this middle part, left or right, to get it really square. But I want to, so I have to kind of, you just have to kind of play with it to see if you can, what you have to straighten and work which way you know it's like okay if I start it here and I know it's a half inch at the top and it's okay so it's a half inch there so I know that's okay and that's relatively close all the way to the bottom we will what's really funny with the 13 count I can pull on it and watch that that's the correct stitch line I think that because the weave is harder or the weave is larger when you're trying to block it um, it lends itself to shifting back easier. Um, well, no, worse, because the 18 is so much closer together, you can kind of, you know, but this wants to shift back because even though you've reestablished these, uh, put more sizing in it and things, it's a looser weave, and so it just is like, yeah, no, I think I'll just go back the way I want to go. And so, um, that's all I can figure as to why it's habitually happening where it's like, okay, uh, silk and ivory on 13 is just going to shift back every time and it's annoying and I kind of don't like working on those pieces because of it but you know it's just something that you have to figure out and you move forward with because 13 count is great you know you can work up something quickly especially something this size and I have a lot like a lot of my brick covers the stand-ups they're on 13 and for just for that reason but then there are a lot of people that wanted me to. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm a coming, I'm a coming. What time is it? Is it like 7.30 or 7 just after? Yep, that's about right. Everybody's done with dinner. And they're on their phones and using up the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Back from the beach. Because they're all out of school now. All right, so we know that that's... Yes, I'm videotaping it, yes. Okay. Absolutely. And I'm doing this again because the videotape that I originally, that when I gave the original class, I didn't know about, like, 
I was taping it off of Zoom, and so it, I didn't know about spotlighting myself. I wanted to see you guys. And so <laughs> it's a teeny tiny view, and I'm more than happy when I send this one out, I'll send the other one out too because... It has good information in it as well that maybe I didn't talk about on here. But um, I'm just making sure I'm staying. Looks pretty square. So I, I signed up for the Friday class, but I'm not going to be able to watch it live. So you will send it out to everybody? Absolutely. Great. Yep. Unfortunately, last week I said the same thing, and three of my classes had no microphone because Microsoft updated my computer and kicked my default out. But I made tests today, and I made tests yesterday, and I was like, this is, all it takes is once as a reminder of, uh, you really got to pay attention to that, Kelly, so, but we have, I got the I have a new tray canvas on the way, so we'll be doing another tray event, and it will be a different style this time, and I have the painting redo on Thursday, because you'd think it'd be easy to do voiceovers, but it's not, because when you guys are asking me questions, I can't remember what I was talking about when I tried to rewatch it. It's like, oh shoot, what did I say there? Who asked me what? They were good questions. I didn't want people to miss those. Let's just say I was a bit of a grouchy bear that night and everyone avoided me at home. When I started finding out as people were messaging me going, Kelly, I can't hear you. Oh! So, yeah, I, so my thought is on something like this that has a questionable center, I want you to block for the center first then work your way out and so that you are not fighting trying to make these guys line up when oh well these outsides look great but the inside looks shifty even though right you know when I pull this up you might well you might not be able to see it but this kind of has a little lump there that lump will go away mm. So, what I was saying was, is that by establishing the center bar, we can then make sure that the outsides are even. So if you have a pillow that has a center that looks a little wonky, start with your center, getting your center straight, and working out from there. Once you put in your pull line, get your straight line established, and then your center, and then pull out from there. And it will, and keep your quilting ruler on it as you're pulling this out. So you don't shift it too much one way or the other, but usually you're okay once you get this in. And I'm going to probably end up having to use my second board because for like the rest of the week because I'm, well, 
I do have more tax because I have these two boxes of <laughs> I have these two boxes of jacquard. But um, my thing is is that I'm going to leave these on. I'm going to leave them on until I can do the project because I know what's going to happen with them. They will shift and I will be severely annoyed. It's just way, oh my gosh, today was 80 degrees and it's like, shouldn't it be raining with it this humid? I really think it should have been. All right, I got to see if I'm pulling too far down on this side. I kind of am. Because it's one stitch here. That's, that's our other thing that we were talking about. Is that if you start pulling too much on this side, I'll have to go back down this side and equal it. Because yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm going to just put that there for a second. This side will pull way, way down. I can see it from this point. See how it dips way down? So, there's always that, again, because of the way we stitch, and I have to accommodate this corner, because otherwise it's not going to be tight, and it's not going to block correctly. So what we do is we don't pull it down, we kind of just tack it into place, and now we're going to come back and... So, I'm going to, because of how far down this point goes, and we have to bring it down this far, so it's tight, and it will block, I'm going to have to come along and make this, and pull the rest of these down, and get them tighter, which they will. It might take a little more effort when we get all the way to the right, but they definitely will. But if we don't, because we're not pulling it as tight as possible, it won't block, and it'll this little weird point will always look that way, and you'll end up trying to wrap it around your piece of foam core or mat board, whatever you're going to use, and it's just not going to look right. But again, we're putting that uh, foam core in, so because it's square, it will appear square. But if we don't get it as close as possible, then you're trying to stretch it around the board, and then the, if it's foam core and you've beveled the edge, which I always bevel the edge, <clears throat> then what happens is you end up Um, bending over that bevel because it's thinner than and so you're pulling you're pulling you're pulling and yeah no so all right can you guys think of any other things that I, questions that you have that I have not touched on yet um, that I can talk about as I'm going back down the other way 
to pull this down. No. Um, I have had a wool, the very first pillow I tried to do, the finisher that I knew at the time did wet blocking. And I have never had a problem with the way that I do it now. I had a problem with the way she had me do it because it had little, it was a yellow wool background pillow with a floral that had some red, uh, must have been some kind of over dye. And she's like, oh, I just spray the heck out of it with starch. Oh my. So the first pillow I ever did I had a yellow wool background and the lady at the time I was just learning and the person that I knew that was telling me how she did things she wet blocked and she told me to just spray the heck out of it with starch well yeah disaster it had little red uh, probably over dye thread. I don't know. Could have been wool for all I know. And that bled and it was a disaster. Um, I couldn't get it blocked straight. And so from then on, she basically only gave me uh, the ornaments thinking, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. And then over time, I learned... I never did that again and also I figured out the best way to block smaller pieces because you know there are some ornaments that come to me and they're a disaster because they didn't do um, it on a frame and <laughs> this store had a design that was a 12 days of Christmas and the samples that she had, the edge is all in, um, is all in metallic. And so that they would, um, they do it without a frame. And the next thing you know, you're getting these pieces with these metallic borders all the way around, rounds. And, oh my gosh, to try to get them to block was a joke. So even though she stuck me with just kind of ornaments and eyeglass cases and things like that, you, I still had to figure out a way to block. I think one of the oddest things I ever blocked was a full-size stocking that used... It's not a crinic metallic, it's like an iridescent plastic. And so, and it was extremely skewed. So I'm steaming it and I'm pulling it and it's, you know, killing my hands. And every time I steam it, I can kind of smell like this ozone-y chemical smell come off of the plastic iridescent. And I think the only time I ever really smelled that is when I did, uh, like, the fruit baskets at the flower shop I worked at. And when you were trying to put the, the plastic shrink wrap on it, oh, it was awful. And... I made it through, but uh, some people have asked me, well, what about um, beads that are on there? You know, do you spray the spray on that? I spray that on everything, and I have never had a problem with it. 
Um, if you're worried about it, I, I don't, I don't, there's like no way to kind of get around it. You can tamp your beads off, you know, like spray it. Test a few. You might have a couple that are left over. Can you guys see me or not? Recording in progress. Uh, so, I was saying about beads. Um, it's a concern for a lot of people. If you're concerned about the coloring coming off the bead or it damaging it, I've never had a problem with it. Just take a few of your beads to the side and spray it in a paper towel and spray some on it. Away from your piece so that you can be reassured that it will be okay. And like I said, never had a problem with that. The only problem I ever had was somebody not nodding after they did the beads and then the running fishing line broke and the beads started to come off one by one by one and it was terrifying. Have you ever had anybody like gluing rhinestones on their off on the glue, glue, Doing what? Gluing on like rhinestones and jewels and You know, I, if they did that, I never knew that it, it never came, it never came off when I've done something like that. So, um, I can honestly say, have not had that challenge yet. Please, I'd rather not have it too. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> but um, I can see that. I can see that. So what I would do is I would take this tree and how, remember how I started the pull line across the top? Yeah. So, um, and this happens with, uh, I had this happen with that, that leopard. It looks like it's been made into a rug. It's a design and it's yeah. like a little pillow, right? Yeah. So I had somebody do that without a frame. And what happened was, is it was so... Um, pointed in one corner that I did my best to shift it back and I did it with the design like this facing me vertically this is the top this is the bottom so then when it didn't want to go straight I got it the best that I could next day popped all the tacks off of it proceeded to turn the canvas so the vert I was on the ends of like the feet and the short end and put my pull line across the opposite end and then pulled it again and started to shift it. So it actually so came like a 90, or like a 180? 90. 90. Okay. So you're doing the opposite, you know, direction, your left and right direction from the previous way. You're just bringing that to the bottom and making that the top and and you're just pulling it in another direction. I will tell you when you start over pulling something, trying to shift it back, what can happen is especially in that cor one corner because she had directional stitching like the tree. As you're pulling that and really stretching it to try to get it to come back, what happens to the stitches is you start seeing through the canvas. It will bring up, it'll open that up a little bit. And so 
you know, your, your stitches just don't look close like this anymore. They start to have a little bit of a gap because you have to just work so hard to pull that square because of how they stitched it. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to do that. But what I am saying is, is that if you can't get it straight, having it facing you, that's the top of the design, this is the bottom of the design, go ahead and do your 90 degree turn and try it again. And, you know, you don't have to go nuts on it, hopefully, but you may find that the way the designer painted it, they didn't have the salvage uh, on the left, which the left and the right, it's supposed to be your vertical. Yeah. Okay. So if the painting company or the painter that painted it, the designer that painted it has forgotten, you know, cut a piece and went and used it and didn't mark the bottom of which way it should be, it could potentially cause you to not be able to block that piece as square because you did a different kind of decorative stitch and it went against and it's just like, yeah, I'm not going to relent. Just turn it. Just give it a 90 degree turn and you'll be surprised. That is the only way I got that piece square because she had just, it, it was scary. It was scarier than the triangle one. It was, it took me two days, hour each time, about. Um, and hopefully you won't, you won't ever have to even deal with it. But this is where if people uh, would just stitch with a frame, but there's a lot of people that don't stitch with a frame. So what are you going to do? You just figure out how to do it and move on because we just need to they just think we can work miracles and no matter what they do we're gonna make it work so we do boy that looks pretty good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sort of it's gotta come down for this Uh, for ornament size things, too, if you really want... No, no, no. Shit. Did I just kick you all out? Recording in progress. So I was just gushing to myself about how I thought this looked really great. So you didn't miss anything. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just going, huh, huh, I'm pretty happy with this. And now I'm talking to myself. Okay. Um, but uh, for ornament size, they have these tiny, those little quilting square things. Because they use them for making little quilting uh, pieces with their rotary cutters. So they come in all different kinds of sizes. So if you're really into making sure that your ornament is perfectly square stitches, and you can tell, you don't have to have one. You can just look at an ornament and look at your stitches and go, mm, yeah, that, that needs to shift. 
it doesn't, you know, doesn't look quite right. You'll, you'll get really good at it after a while. That's why usually, usually, I can eyeball it and see. But, again, you know when you really need to use it is when you're going to have it framed. Because when you have it framed and it's going into a mat, if it isn't square, it's going to be obvious very quickly when that guy is trying to mat it. Alright. Oh, I gotta go higher. So down. Mm, I'm reflecting my lamp so much. So I have the bottom corner lined up and I have to kind of well I guess I could do it part way up okay, that's good Okay, good. Good. I Yeah, as soon as this is done, I'll go ahead and get it on I'll start it uploading onto YouTube's and it takes it'll take the better part of the evening. So, um no, it's I lose track of time and didn't even know it was past eight o'clock. So <laughs> Absolutely. It'll probably be sent to you on Saturday. You're welcome. You too. Take care. Bye. All right. You guys got any other questions? I'm sorry. What, hun? I just said I was good. Thanks, Kelly. You're good? Everybody's good? Yeah, I've been totally watching this. I'm just trying to like answer some that I thought of people that I had and then went along. So it's really cool. All right. Well, you guys take care. And I'm going to finish this in the morning because I'm tired. So. <laughs> right? So you guys have a good night. Good night, good night. Take care. Good to see you, Catherine. Bye. Oh, my goodness. Killing me.